So I want to focus on deals all the reactions. And these are four two psycho additions, right? These are allowed reaction reactions based on the Woodward the Woodward Hoffman rules. And the Woodward Hoffman rules essentially are saying that okay, well, the homo and the lumo of these molecules have to be symmetrical. And that's the whole idea behind, uh, you know, the reason why we do the molecular orbital theories. Just to kind of prove, uh, you know, uh, why these reactions will occur. So these reactions typically occur with an ene, an alkene, and a diene. Right. So let's see. <laughs> How about these? How about this molecule? So what if we wanted to react this with this, right? Uh, what would be my reaction product? What would be my reaction product? Well, again, notice I have my diene and I have an ene, right? An alkene and two double bonds, a diene. So the way you do these chemistry is that you actually rotate your diene vertically, right? So I'm going to rotate my diene vertically. So I'm going to redraw it like this. All right. So I'm going to redraw my diene like this vertically, and I'm going to leave, and I'm going to leave my ene just like this. Now, this is where you want to count your carbon. So again, this is carbon one, two, three, four. With these chemistries, we're forming cyclic rings. So we're forming cyclohexene. We're, we're forming a six-membered ring. So here's how the reaction mechanism go. <coughs> carbon. Uh, so this is carbon one, two, three, four, and then it's carbon five and six. So the reaction always goes a pattern. A bond is going to form between carbons 1 and 5. A bond is going to form between carbons 6 and 1. And this double bond here is going to come in the middle between 2 and 3. And so we get our six-membered ring with a double bond between 2 and 3. And we form, cyclo we form cyclohexene. Uh, so this is the general pattern for these types of reactions. You form a bond between 4 and 5, 6 and 1, and you move that double bond between 2 and 3. All right, so let's look at another one. So what if we were given cyclopentadiene mm -hmm. uh, plus this molecule here? What would be your reaction products? Well, again, I'm going to turn my diene vertically and label my carbon. So let's see. I'm going to draw it this way, my cyclopentadiene, my diene. Uh, kind of, ver I mean, it doesn't look vertically, but... Vertically in terms of or double bonds, right? <laughs> Plus, I'm going to rotate my ene vertically also. So now I'm looking at the molecule in an easier fashion. So now you count your carbon. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. And you count your carbons that's included in the reaction. So you count your carbons. The carbons that you count is between the dienes and the enes. Right? So notice that. I will form a six-membered ring. So again, the reaction always occurred. Four and five reacts. Six and one reacts. And this double bond here moves between two and three. So I'm going to get my six-membered ring. Yes. My double bond is between two and three. <clears throat> well, look what's between carbons one and four. We have this branching of CH3 here. We have this branching, we have this branching of CH3 here, uh, CH2 here. Right, we have this branching of CH2. So we get a CH3 here in carbon five, CH3 here in carbon six. All right, and then I have a branch here between carbon, uh, carbons one and four. So this is a molecule we get. Let's do some couple more. What if we were given this molecule here? And we reacted this with, let's see, this ketone here. What would be the product? Well, again, I'm going to label my carbons, count my carbons. So this is one, two, three, four. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's my diene. I'm going to my ene, this is five, six. So again, I draw my arrow from five, uh, four to five, 
that bond forms six and one forms a bond and this double bond moves in notice that i'm always forming a double bond between carbons between carbons two and three so i get my cyclic ring all right i might double bond between two and three but look what's bonded to my uh to my double bond here i have two methyl groups so this is one this is two right on carbon six we have this ketone here So this is a product of these of, of this reaction. Let's look at another one. What if we reacted? Uh, let's see. What if we reacted? Uh, this molecule plus uh, this molecule here. Right. What would be the products? Well, again, count your carbons. Count within the diene and the ene. So this is my diene. This is my ene. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm always going to form a bond between four and five. I'm always going to form a bond between six and one. I'm always going to form a bond between, uh, form a double bond between two and three. So again, the products for this will look something like this. And maybe I should just draw it on the next page. So bear with me here. All right, so oh, actually I could draw it here. So the product for this will look something like this. I form a cyclohexane ring. I have a double bond between two and three. Two and three. What's attached to my double bond between two and three? I have a methyl group here, branching off here. Now this whole substituent, is bonded to this end right here. Can you see that? All right, so all I did was take the double bond away and form this bond on here. So I have this whole group here. That's bonded uh, to my structure. Now, these occur with sin, sin addition of my hydrogen. So my hydrogens are going to be on the same side. Right. So in terms of stereochemistry, my hydrogens are going to be on the same side here. So that's what we mean. And actually, we can draw a 3D structure of this molecule. So how does a 3D structure look? Well, this is how you would draw the uh, 3D structure to really emphasize stereochemistry. So we have a double bond between th two and three. We have a methyl group here. Right. We have our ether, our ketones, and then again, we want to show our hydrogens, syn addition. Right. So that would be a 3D structure of that molecule. So let's look at a couple more examples. So what if we had this molecule here, and we wanted to react it with this aldehyde here? All right, what would be the product? Well, again, counting my carbons, I have carbon one, two, three, four. Where's my ene? Here's uh, five and six, right? And we always say we're gonna form a bond between four and five, six and one, and then we have the double bond that comes in between two and three. So we form our six-membered ring. We have the double bond between two and three. Well, on carbon six here, we have this whole aldehyde group here. Right, so between carbon six, we have this whole aldehyde group here. Now look, between carbon one and four, we have this branch in ether here. All right, this branch in oxygen here. So between carbons one and four, we have this. All right. So we have this molecule here. Now, uh, to draw it flat uh, in terms of uh, 3D structure, we may draw this molecule as of such, right? We have a double bond between uh, uh, two and three. We have our aldehyde group here. And then we have this branch in oxygen between the carbons four and five. So this would be the kind of, you know, 3D structure, all right? So let's look at about two more. So what if we reacted uh, 
cyclopentadiene again, uh, plus this molecule here. This is an OCH3, so I'm sorry about this, guys. OCH3. And we have this alkyne bond here. What would be the product? Well, again, I'm going to label my carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice that I went to my alkyne bond. Now, again, we have an ene in this uh, in this in this alkyne bond here. So this is where my five and six content would go. So again, I'm going to form a six-membered ring. Between carbons two and three, we have this double bond here. All right. Now we took one of these. Oh, I forgot to do my mechanism. So again, four and five, six and one, and this double bond moves in between two and three. Now, remember, I took one of these uh, double bond away. So that means that I still have an extra double bond, um, an extra double bond. All right. So I still have a double bond here. Now look what's between carbons one and four. I have this branch in CH2 here. So uh, two, I have my CH2 there. In carbon six, we have this whole group here. So we have this ketone here. Or not a ketone, but an ester. All right. And then we have this other ester down here. All right. So that would be the product of the molecule that is formed. Now, if you want to draw this flat again, if you want to see the flat structure of this molecule, we have a double bond there. We have a double bond there, right? We have a double bond there. We have a double bond there. We have these esters, these ester group on the end. All right. And then we have, or CH2 that is branching. Right. So we have our CH2 that's branching. All right. So let's look at one more. Again, we have this. This molecule here. And we add this alkyne here. Now, again, an alkyne is still classified in these reactions as or E, right? It's just one extra bond. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, I'm always going to form a bond between carbons four and five, six and one, and then these electrons move in to form a double bond between two and three. So my observed product will be a cyclohexane ring, right? Between carbons one and four. So look between carbons one and four, we have this NH group here. All right. So between carbon one and four, we have this NH group here. NH. Right. Now, because it's an alkyne, we took away uh, one of those pi bonds. So we have an extra double bond that's left over. So we put the extra double, we put the extra bond there. All right. And then on the end, in carbon five, we have this cyanide group here. Or this nitrile group here. Get this nitrile group here, and that's it. We have our hydrogen that's branched off in carbon six, but again, we don't need to show that. So again, these chemistries are pretty much straightforward. The major thing is that you do not want to rotate the molecule. So notice that, notice the pattern I've used all along. Uh, I've set my diene to be vertically where I could count my bonds vertically, all right? There's, I, I did not switch the orientation. So if I'm given a molecule like this, Right, and it's given in this fashion, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to switch it to look something like this. Notice that my double bonds are now vertically orientated. So I could do my uh, four to five addition, six to one addition, and move my double bond between two and three. So these reactions are just a pattern.